Hi there. In this section, we see Tegram Trozin against Boris Spassky in their World Championship match. This is round 22. D4, and now we see the Polish defence, B5. And apparently the Polish people cheered in the audience. Six Polish people cheered. <laughs> okay, so E4, Bishop B7. So the game was actually nicknamed Six Poles at chess games site. So we see F3 blunting that bishop. A6, bishop E3, E6, knight D2. And we reach a kind of fantasy configuration, which does have great practical value. This part of the pawn structure blunts that fianchettoed bishop. This aspect with c3 means that white is prepared sometimes if b4, c4. So that's kind of prophylaxis. I know there isn't a fianchetto bishop here. It doesn't have to blunt a bishop yet, but it makes for a very practical pawn chain as well as an aesthetic symmetry, which emerges here <laughs> after bishop d3, d6. If the knight joins in, we have a nice symmetry. We have a4, though, being played c6 if b4 then c4 is a nice advantage for white okay so c6 knight e2 knight bd7 white castles we have black castling knight g3 rook e8 a takes b5 a takes b5 rook takes a8 queen takes a8 Queen c2, bishop f8, and now a clamping strategy b4, trying to dissuade any future c5. It's interesting. It's also, it's not just about, it's what c5 represents. It's not just about preventing c5. It's trying to sometimes imprison this bishop forevermore. So it's really about the b7 bishop as well, this kind of prevention. Prevention avoids the liberation quite often of the opponent's pieces like here so queen b8 is played if c5 white can take and then just take on b5 and there's no real penalty here white has just won a key pawn so okay queen b8 knight b3 so it looks as though this is even tighter the grip over c5 g6 white takes the a file e5 and now queen f2 which is an even tighter grip over c5 if you think about it we have d5 trying to liberate black's pieces a little bit d takes e5 knight takes e5 and the bishop drops back and you can see this prevention strategy this these pawns on light squares the hemmed in bishop here that's c5 square securely reinforced by multiple white pieces we see bishop g7 if d takes e4 knight takes e4 let's say knight takes e4 bishop takes e4 that bishop still looks miserable on b7 really miserable c5 is so well gripped well it's even poised with this battery to maybe even strategically exchange off the guardian bishop leaving a gigantic knight outpost on c5 so say black plays c5 to try and avoid such a plan bishop takes queen takes knight takes c5 big advantage say knight c4 instead the bishop can start pointing in the direction of the king looking at f6 if knight d7 e takes would fix black's pawns and in fact here white does seem to have a much better bishop than the b7 bishop and the attacking prospects seem high in this scenario white has a very pleasant attacking position so it still had great perks to kind of lock down pieces on the queen side to give a more freer hand for the attack so anyway bishop g7 was tried and in fact we have bishop a7 
and here queen c7 and it looks as though the game's going to be repeated a, a threefold repetition and here at move 25 Petrosian could have actually claimed a draw the same position has occurred with the same player to move free you know for the third time Petrosian could have claimed a draw but instead played this move allowing the possibility of Spassky breaking the repetition and Spassky did actually break the repetition with Queen c8 if Spassky had accepted the draw he'd have to win the last two games quite a tall order so maybe he was trying to uh, he was banking on something here but with this bishop on b7 and this restraint strategy it doesn't seem as though black's prospects are that wonderful with this key bad bishop we see bishop d4 and now a very ambitious move h5 the problem is if black ever loses that h pawn then the king safety of black is made much much worse perhaps sometimes it's useful h4 h3 but this seems quite ambitious on the other hand if queen b8 here you know knight c5 and this looks miserable that bishop is in prison if knight fd7 white could play for example f4 and this position to keep this bishop on d4 it doesn't matter about the structure here the issue is black's king's safety checkmate ends the game is the overarching principle quite often you know this variation these pieces are kind of offside and white has great prospects here for example like this is an example where white has fantastic prospects in this position just to take it a bit further this is a bit of fiction you know white can even consider a bishop sack here this is totally fictional but there are scenarios where you know white can end up winning lots of pawns it's a fascinating you know scenario maybe to consider winning lots of pawns so anyway we have h5 it's commitment pawns don't go backwards and all Petrosian does is h3 here if knight c5 h4 is this a big deal any h3 not particularly rook a7 if d takes e4 here this seems rather desperate the thing is if bishop a8 g takes h3 and white's better white is just better here and if yeah this situation again you know even if this happens even if this undermine ha position happens why it's still better why it's winning material that b7 bishop is a liability a major liability in the position but anyway h3 just avoids any hassle with h4 h3 white is better because white's kind of playing a piece up this this locked in bishop controls the a file where is this leading h4 is just that now it's a liability pawn to be looked after for the rest of the game potentially that pawn is a potential major liability on h4 we see d takes e4 f takes e4 and this actually creates pressure on f6 and for example it's already restricting black even more if this knight moves then we just take on f6 so the knight goes back protecting f6 there and this knight comes in reinforcing e4 so not wanting to take on h4 which some players might have done chosen just strengthens the position the pawn isn't really going anywhere is black really going to play a move like this like g5 they're going to be weakening all the dot all, all the all the pardon me all the light squares in the position that looks absolutely crazy so yes it seems a very interesting position where <laughs> queen takes h4 is is almost on the cards but yeah this leaves it on the cards so it seems blacks in a desperate kind of scenario here this self-inflicted 
the wounds, this H4 pawn. The thing is, also the knight is on route potentially to for queen eight takes h4 knight f3 to knight g5 and it would be like you know the h7 soft spot we see c5 being played and this is a really interesting instructive moment in my view about this game so this smacks of desperation you know there's a loose pawn that's, that's sacking a pawn it smacks of desperation but the key thing is here after knight takes c5 how would you take on c5 here for 100 points how would you take on c5 so we're going to be a pawn up i mean we are a pawn up after recapturing the piece but how would you take with the bishop or the pawn so for 100 points the key thing is you know checkmate ends the game is like the top principle in chess and Trojan doesn't mind, you know, the double pawns because concretely, you know, there is a concrete block <laughs> heading for black knockout. Bishop takes f6. You know, the f6 knight is under fire. And you might wonder, well, hold on, hold on. What about e4? e4 is under fire. So it's a fascinating position. But yeah, bishop takes c5 is just miss, you know, just relieving the pressure on black. In fact, black could play bishop takes e4 here. And this scenario affords bishop d5, and black should be even at least. But with the bishop still standing now, after this structural concession for that pressure on f6, things are not easy for black. There's a key point here, or two. Black plays bishop takes e4. So it seems, you know, what is this? Why well, it's not even a pawn up. Checkmate ends the game. This gives now a major opportunity for an attacking move. And note, White's control of the a file, you don't really want things in chess just to look pretty without functionality. A justified functionality of this pretty rook on this file is to look at f7. Checkmate ends the game. So this next move for 100 points, what would you play? Yes, it makes the rook more functional as though rook a7 is a concern. If white plays bishop takes f6, then there's bishop takes c2. And the edge for white is it's only a small edge for white. So bishop b3 is really targeting the soft spots, you know, like towel, you know, go for the soft spots. We see bishop f5. Here bishop d5 is not possible because bishop takes f6 is winning material. Simple as that. If bishop takes b3, we take on g7 and the bishop's hanging here. So yes, that's not possible. If queen f5, then actually we can intensify the pressure with rook a6. It's not even just rook a7, it's rook a6. Intensifying the pressure on f6. If knight h5, we can go back for a7. Chapmate ends the game is, is the major thing, you know, here. And if knight takes e4, we, we crash through for an attack. For example, here we're crashing through. We can even play this, hitting the rook, hitting the queen, taking out queen b1 check. We're x ray defending b1. So this is just fantastic for white, these scenarios. If knight h5, then bishop takes f7 check, bishop takes e8, it's simple and strong. So it's very, very difficult, all the pressure around f7, f6. Forgetting about h4 for a moment. But we have rook a7 now. So yes, in the game continuation, bishop f5 was chosen. And rook a7. So things are conspiring against f7. Checkmate ends the game. It doesn't matter about the structural concession. And in terms of structure, black's made a structural concession over here anyway. 
this h4 pawn is ready to be eaten at some point we see knight d7 if rook f8 here is the point maybe where we can take time out to take out h4 and then we can install a knight on g5 potentially if black wants to exchange off queens then that's fine then c6 we ending up with a brilliant position here for example like this it's vicious so knight d7 is played and here knight f3 and actually Spassky actually resigns in this position yeah in this super high profile game you know Spassky resigns here he feels his position is that hopeless so why would he resign here it's like equal on pawns but look at all of white's pieces look at this pressure around the king checkmate ends the game all this pressure around key points around the king and there's also this side there as well probably not that one this side there you know for queen h7 so as example let's say bishop takes d4 c takes d4 and now we we've undoubled our pawns thanks very much protected past pawn and also here there's a massive liability for black can you see what that is for 100 points tactical test as an example to try and evict that rook there's bishop takes f7 check here if king takes then rook takes d7 is crushing we do get a killer common square killer common squares around the king you know end the game because they, they're linked to the checkmate concept we've got a killer common square now f7 and then you know mating here or if king h8 knight takes g6 is checkmate so yes it seems maybe a little bit surprising but once you investigate this position so let's rule out bishop takes d4 i mean we don't want to straight out the pawns right what about rook e7 well then we can weaken the king and here we can play actually queen d4 check is is strong and queen d6 looking at the rook and this is quite brutal for black if queen takes c5 then we take take the rook there what what does black actually do here because we're going to intensify the pressure with a move like c6 yeah it's not the case of the queen painfully on dark squares there you know that's going to be winning there's a token check but it doesn't do anything why it's controlling that diagonal as well here so this is brutal you know a brutal scenario if rook f8 then we can use this plan queen takes h4 just look at all of this pressure on the king it's just immense with knight g5 soon so knight g5 here what does black do taking on d4 let's say king g7 what tactic would we have here okay we can actually play bishop takes f7 here knight takes f7 is crushing because c6 yeah it's it's all pretty brutal stuff so very interesting game i think for me the absolute golden takeaway point is you know sometimes we we are faced with this horrible structural that you know seemingly visual downside about oh, our pawns aren't pretty we're wrecking our pawns but we we have to be more <laughs> concrete sometimes we need to try and throw concrete at the opponent with concrete moves with concrete pressure on on things like f6 and f7 we have to be more brutal about things it's not just about the neatness of our pawns our, our pieces can't just look pretty they need to be functional the rook needs to have infiltration points it needs to have targets 
we need our pieces to have concrete targets to be concrete to be frank concrete at the opponent we can't just have these abstract notions and we see that with that move b takes c5 that strikes me as a very concrete specific move justified by the position black's activities to generate counterplay clearly leave the h4 pawn as a long-term liability to be picked up in any case so such a structural concession in this context is even more minuscule a concession in practice so i think this game shows the importance checkmate enter the game and to be concrete and try and throw concrete at the opponent where possible instead of you know caring too much about pawns Spassky did try and play energetically with huge you know counterplay potential but it just wasn't there the earlier restraining on the queen side the b7 bishop that liberational move you know in the, the liberational pawn moves didn't really achieve too much for black on this occasion okay so a very interesting game i hope you enjoyed it as much as me and this you know is getting towards the end of this match so this was a key game for trojan to beat off boris Paski to try and retain the world championship you know title the role the world champion title for a few more years okay so very key important game here showing us the brutalities of the concrete nature of chess things to factor in okay thanks very much